All right, we're back. So we uh, just had a bit of a heavy moment with uh, the uh, uh, the Ernest made there sleeping or uh, using his sleep on our uh, main character through our drink, um, and then trying to rouse the uh, people here against Jarvania again. Um, it's hard not to understand where she's coming from, but at the same time, as someone who's never really gone through it, it's easy to just be like. Eh. I dare say that could not have played out any worse, given that, that the first commander and Lord Artorial are not here to take control of the situation. I spoke with a messenger who said that they would be returning shortly, but until they do, naught will be done. Lord Amenolin has retreated to the barracks and is refusing to speak to anyone. Therefore, it falls to us to ensure that the order has been, has been fully restored. Come, let us walk the streets and speak with the people. Hey there, highborn merchant. Thank goodness right there. He literally could have stopped the guard. Yeah. My wife and I fell while fleeing with the others at first. The Trusians tended to our bruises afterwards. Huh. Those mad fools have ruined everything. And for what? Oh, you fell. Oh, you poor dear. We'll see to it that the people who knocked you over are executed at once. They were wrong to resort to violence, but when I heard her speak, her words were as a dagger in my heart. Who are we to decide that enough is enough? That their calls for justice can never be answered. This will be the end of it, or will there be others like them and, and the True Brothers? I do not want to bear steel against my kinsmen ever again. I do not know if I even can. You didn't the first time. Unless you were talking about killing the, uh, the heretics. I've heard rumors that the young lord was a drunken fool. What imbecile, though, thought it would be a good idea to let him have the run of Falcon's Nest? Well, I say him and Sir Emma take their bloody change and shove it up their asses. I'll not be taken in by that rot again. Okay. Also, you know, you, you, you'd you actually be doing a great thing in uh, not letting other people lose their wives and sons to war, though. I tripped and got a boo-boo. That was the fucking the, the, the main thing about his complaint was I fell over. Well, what say you? While a merchant fell over and hurt himself, some lady's tired with Sir Amaric, and some guy doesn't want to slash it, uh, fight his own people. So the violence has passed, but the people are far from recovered. That is to be expected. For the moment, it appears that no innocents were harmed by the gods. The blame for all casualties can be placed squarely upon the protesters. Nevertheless, the people will not soon forget the image of a young lordling ordering the public execution of an unarmed protester, one whose words resonated with the hearts of many. After all, who among us has not lost loved ones? Oh, sick. What are they giving me? Augmented Hellfire gear. That's surprising. Okay. That's a neat looking katana. Alright. Ooh. Thankwood would like nothing more than to leave the falcon's nest behind. Lord Artorial and the first commander should have returned by now. To the tavern then, the first order of business will be to speak with Lord Amenolin, and I somehow doubt he has removed an ilm since we last saw him. I, I, I didn't actually see him. You just told me he was in the ilm. He just told the guard to go stop her. He absolutely could have meant go detain her. True. Now, keep in mind, Madeline is a lord, yes, but he has zero experience dealing with anything. So he was probably terrified as fuck and just froze. My apologies, Miro. I bear full responsibility for this debacle. There will be time for that later. I, for one, am more concerned about picking up the pieces. What do we do now? Or what do we know? Now? What do we know? According to initial reports, the protest was orchestrated by the young woman from whom Lord Amenolin ordered shot. She and her conspirators infiltrated the Falcon's Nest, posing as servants and guests. Several were taken alive, others resisted and were struck down. Still, others took their own lives. 
Our forces suffered casualties as well, but by the grace of the Fury, no civilians were seriously injured. Still more remarkably, the ringleader yet lives, for the time being at least. The Chirurgians are doing what they can for her, but she may not live through the night. Given their impeccable timing, it's like the convictors who drew us away from the hamlet were in league with the protest protesters. Accordingly, we have detained them for questioning. <sighs> I'll be sworn that these villains spend as much effort plotting the failure of this peace conference as we did its success. Well, if the mood of the hamlet is any indication, theirs has been, have been more fruitful labors. In the wake of the protest, the people seem disillusioned. Yeah, some merchant fell over and got, 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 got a boo-boo. You spoke with them, then? I see. Sir Emmerich placed his trust in me. It will be difficult to explain what has happened here. Remember how far we have come first time we become commander. The people's faith may be shaken, but we convinced them before and we will do so again. If we can find a means to remind them, to show them once more the promise that holds that change holds for all, then this tragedy too shall pass into the past. You must pray that you are right. Nevertheless, for the time being, I have no choice but to suspend the peace conference pending Sir Emmerich's final decision. Under my circumstance, uh, under the circumstances, I cannot leave Falcon's nest. Meryl, will you deliver my report to the Lord Commander in my stead? Get up, Amenolin. You're going with her. Go on without me. I was not asking. You will answer for your actions, in person. Is that clear? Yes, my lord. Come on, Roy. Your manservant is not here. In fact, I have not seen him for some time. Honoroy? Honoroy! I could have sworn he was... Hey, the uh, name of this, uh, this quest is Consequences. Okay. Where is Honoroy? The best way to find him okay. is to fly. There he is. they done to you? Onowa! Onowa! Is that you, my lord? You... you seem rather flustered. Because of you, you imbecile! What in the seven hells happened to you? My apologies. Some few of the guests expressed a wish to leave, and I implored them to stay. It would seem they took issue with my request. Your oh, gods forgive me. If I had only been more careful with my words. D do not blame yourself, my lord. I know. I know that you and your brother have Ishgard's best interests at heart. That poor woman. She lives in the past, clinging to the memories of the lost. But the future holds so much promise, so much joy. And you, you know that better than any. Calm yourself. The boy will live. But it's imperative we get him inside and into the care of a Kairujin without delay. Oh, we were so close! Why does it all have to fall to pieces? 
Don't they want to live in peace? Don't they want to be happy? We all want the same thing, and still, still, it falls to pieces! Tell me, what, what was I supposed to do? Hm? Someone, anyone, tell me, what was I supposed to do? Stop looking to others. You make your choice and you live with the consequences. And what would you know about consequences? You who always know just what to say and just what to do. Your every deed is greeted with a round of applause. You know nothing about me. I have fought tooth and nail for the people I hold dear. Done everything in my power to save them. And I have failed. Learn to live with it. I have. Now Madeline punches Thancred, he just turns his head slightly. That's not a punch! This is a punch! Sends him fucking sailing. I may have overreacted, but I ne it needed to be done. He was becoming hysterical. I understand the desire to look for reasons, for excuses, to convince yourself you had no choice. But the past is the past and there is not to be gained from reliving your mistakes. I know this. I know this. But he... Mm, let's go the battle axe, I guess. Okay, so we got the choice here. We got... This weapon. I mean, those are pretty sick looking. I might just go with those and uh, transmog them. I have no desire to wait for the Lordling to emerge from his puddle of self pity. We have important matters to attend to in Ishgard. Ishgard. There you go. Anyway, yeah, uh, so I, I was saying in chat there during that, uh, Honor is like saying to the Ishgardian nobles and whatnot, hey, don't go. Like, you know, we can still fix this. And th their response to a child is, hey, let's beat this child to death for telling us not to go. I'm not sure the Ishgardian nobles should be saved. Uh, okay, I'm assuming they're all nobles, but it's basically uh, Ishgardian people. If that's the response to a child just saying, hey, don't go, uh, I have some concerns that uh, the Dragon Song War here isn't, uh, isn't addressing. Word of the demonstration and its resolution outstripped you, Miro. Every man, woman, and child of Ishgard has heard the tale. It is rumored that my youngest lack of judgment was to blame. Of course, such stories are prone to exaggeration. What exactly came to pass? I see. So that is the truth of it. Regardless of his intent, the result is undeniable. He has furthered the cause of these misguided few who cannot let go of the past. By an instant, the delicate piece we were poised to forge is once more beyond us. To dwell so deeply on the war and the vengeance it begets, only for that too to be taken away. Is it any wonder they were left bereft? I 
I assume he told them that. But what was the sacrifice? Have we not to show for our suffering? I thought peace is a sufficient salve, but mayhap I was mistaken. We are warriors, Lord Edmund, and ours is a nation built on centuries of warfare. Right or wrong, this is who we are, and we cannot we deny it at our peril. To hold on to the past without being beholden to it, I. We must needs find a way to honor the sacrifice of our forefathers without glorying in their excesses. A difficult path to be sure. We dare not decry, deny the scars which mar our nation's soul, lest we spur the other disillusioned souls to retrace them. But as you say, we're, we're, we dare not revel in our past glories either, for they are tainted all. A clear, unambiguous enemy, and an undeniable righteous cause. Tis a bitter reflection, and lies though they were, they did serve to unite us. No truth will ever serve as well, I fear. Yet. We are not without options. At our last meeting, a proposal was tabled by the other members of the Eorzean Alliance for joint military exercises to strengthen the ties between our nations and test our readiness to meet with a common threat. I had thought to delay these exercises until after the peace conference, but mayhap a grand melee would be just the thing to lift our beleaguered spirits. Better still, an occasion for the Temple Knights to watch and take the field as allies. A unified Ishgardian force filled with men and women from all walks of life, which would stand against a coalition of the Allies' nation's finest. Hosted by Ishgard in the shadow of the Gates of Judgment, a victory under such circumstances would serve a, a re reaffirmation, nay, a declaration to all and sundry, that we are as strong and united as ever. Such a victory would do much to fan the flames of patriotism, it is true, but if we should be defeated? Though, even to hold our own against the cream of three nations might be presented as a triumph. Very well, you may count on my support, for what little it is worth. However, I have a request. I would have my son Amenelin take part in the Grand Melee. By his deeds, has he brought shame upon Ishgard, and so by his deeds, I would have him bring our nation honor. As you wish, my lord. If that is his desire, then it shall be so. Now then. We have no time to lose. Mira, would you be so kind as to deliver my instructions to Lucia? I shall write to the Alliance leaders at once and begin making arrangements for the Grand Melee. Should you have a chance to see my son, pray inform him of his duty. If he has not already returned, he will soon enough, making every effort to avoid me. They haven't sank but this, uh... They haven't uh, sentenced Sanker to death yet, so I don't think he knows. <laughs> the Monetarists are going to use this as an opportunity to try invading Ishgard. Probably. So that is the solution. A grand melee to unite the people. And what part would they have you play in this affair, I wonder? You, whom they have taken into their confidence, upon whom they have come so heavily to rely on. And will you oblige them when the proposition is made? Will you stand for Ishgard once more? We come from this far, have we not? I will stand for my friends and comrades, not a nation. It is getting to be a bit much, isn't it? A poor choice of words. For friends tried and true, then. And living, the living and the lost. So, for this grand melee of hits, Sir Emmerich wishes to field a core comprised both of his Temple Knights and Hilda's Watch, yes? I can only imagine what she will have to say about that. In fact, curiosity compels me to go and see for myself. Sure. Well then, Mero, have you spoken to Sir Emmerich? I was aware of the Alliance request, so Sir Emmerich would turn these exercises into a spectacle for the masses. It is not that I doubt the efficacy of such a plan. Indeed, I know its effectiveness only too well, having witnessed it firsthand. Nevertheless, he has not once given me reason to doubt his intentions, and these are desperate times indeed. I will select knights for the event forthwith. As for the watch... Did he now? How considerate of Master Thancred to seek out our young watch commander of his own volition. Alas, he acted prematurely. Pray, deliver this list of watch candidates to Hilda. I would have her best men, not her most dispensable. Lola Reed will be arrested for fomenting heresy, but he'll just go, nah, -uh, and they'll have to let him go. Yeah, that's how it works.
Everyone knows that's how you get out of uh, charges of fermenting heresies. You just say, nah, uh. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Tanker's been telling me all about Ceramics Grand Soiree. Seems we're expected to join in. It's nice of him to invite us and all, but I hope he knows what he's doing, because we ain't dressed to dance with professional bleeding soldiers. Well, well, seems the first commander's gone and handpicked her guests. Can't say I disagree with her choices, though. She's got a good eye. Will you be fighting, too? Reckon it'd inspire the lads if you were. Might take their mind off getting their hides tanned and all. Think about it, eh? I hate to ask, but you haven't seen our favorite lordling, have you? Ah, I thought not. On the assumption that he is not to be found in his father's loving embrace, I suggest we split up and look for him. I will search foundation, and you search the pillars. Ah, he's probably in the crozier shopping like a sack of shit. Lolorito's bizarre immunity to the consequences of his actions. He's rich. It's not really all that bizarre, yet. that's where he is. Hey, dude. I carried Honoroy to the manor. Honoroy. Our best Trujians are tending to him as we speak. He is yet to awake, but surely, surely he will. So father has volunteered me for this grand melee of theirs. <sighs> my beloved family, always making my decisions for me. No, it's not like that. It's just... Oh, you wouldn't understand. How could you? You are free to be the woman you want to be, whereas I... I... I am a son of House Fortant. Fortant, don't you see? My future was determined before I was born. What I could and could not do. Right or wrong, that was the way of it. Until the old order began to crumble. Now we wander amidst the rubble searching for purpose or a place. All around me, brave men and women rise to the occasion. With faith and conviction, they dedicate themselves to their causes, but I, not I. I was terrified of making the wrong choice, which is why I let better men than make them for, for me. Do this, do that, take this duty, guard this conference. I suppose I had convinced myself I was above it, until your friend showed me otherwise. When I saw Anora, I wanted to scream, I wanted someone to blame, but in the end, there was only me. Only me. So you see, I cannot meekly bow my head and accept Father's command. Such cowardice is what brought me to this point. I will go to Sir Emmerich and I will make my own decision. Hi, Mini Cat. What's up, Mini Cat? What you doing? Oh, okay. Back to important things then, I see. Guys, Mini Cat's doing some important things behind me. In that she's flumped on the ground. He goes and shits on Emmerich's desk. I mean, if he went and shit on Emmerich's desk, I would be really impressed. Because he'll have made that choice himself. A little concerned that that's his first choice he makes himself. But. Lord Commander is not to be disturbed. May I ask what matter demands his personal attention? I see. Very well. You may enter. Lord Commander, if I may, I wish to speak with you before the Grand Melee. Proceed. How do you do it, my lord? How do you lead with such certainty when so many of our countrymen will not hear of peace with the Dravanians? Some of them hate you almost as much as the dragons themselves. They decry you as a patricide in the streets. They even tried to kill you, for God's sakes. Yet still, you march on, undaunted, 
where no archbishop dared to tread. What is your secret? Where do you find the strength? For centuries, our nation has been punished for the sins of our forefathers. If our punishment is to end, I believe we must right the wrongs of antiquity and move forward as a nation united. Needless to say, my father did not share this opinion. He did not believe the people strong enough to bring about their own deliverance, trusting only in himself. Tyranny seemed to him the only solution. But I have faith in the people, Lord Amanalain. I have faith that they will weather this storm and overcome every trial we set before them. Many have fought and died to see this blight upon our nation's history cleansed, and I would not let their sacrifices be in vain. Though we invite reprisals, the risk is worth the reward. I want to believe. I do. Lord Commander, through my careless orders, a pall has been cast over these proceedings, and I beg the opportunity to make amends. I, Emmanuelaine de Forton, do hereby request leave to take part in the Grand Melee. Who am I to deny such a heartfelt plea? We would be honored to have you join the fray, my lord. You will take charge of the Ishgardian forces. For all my other responsibilities, I am still Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, and I would not soon yield this duty to another. The esteemed Sir Emmerich leading the Temple Knights and the Watch into battle along with my youngest. I could wish for no more. Then you wish for too little, my lord. There is another who might yet join the fray. An indispensable ally to whom we owe much and more. An adventurer beholden to none who nevertheless chose to champion our cause, who has shared in our suffering and in our glory. A warrior without equal, who I am privileged to call a friend. There is no one I would rather have fighting by my side. I ask this in full knowledge of your obligations and will not think less of you should you refuse. But if your conscience will allow it, might you oblige me, my friend, one more time. <sighs> Together we shall give the people a spectacle for the ages. A celebration to mark the dawning of a new era. Fortunately, it is not a mandatory PvP segment. That would be awful. Gods help me, I think I might it might be love. I dare say it might be cheating, too. Your mere presence is enough to turn the tide of most battles. And did you see the way his eyes lit up when you nodded? It was a look of boundless relief and joy. One would think a politician more practiced at concealing his emotion. Still, his honesty does him credit. For a moment, I was fair inspired to pledge myself to the cause. But that would be improper. This is their fight, and yours, but not mine. Okay, that's the one we're going with right there. The Hailstone Grim Grimoire. Practical for the ages. Sir Emmerich informs you that the Alliance leaders have agreed to his proposal. The Grand Melee will be held here in the shadow of the Gates of Judgment and in sight of the capital. An announcement has been made, and Allied forces are currently en route. 
The eyes of Ishgard are upon us, Miro. We must not fall. Or fail. Sorry, then. I... yeah. A rare opportunity is to pit yourself against allied forces outside of Cardinal, perhaps? I would not miss this for the world. <laughs> what the fuck, the King Slime hat? It's true, Miro's okay with that. She's like, you know what? If he's if he's after my hat, that means he's not after me. Alright, we're gonna teleport outside the gates of judgment. We're gonna go outside the gates of judgment, but we're gonna take our, our next break here. But yeah, so essentially, um, Gage, you missed uh quite a a, a bit, but uh Basically, uh, we are trying to get peace talks between the Dravanians and the Ishgardians, and many of the Ishgardians are like, nah, son, we lost loved ones to these fucks. We're not, we're, we're, they don't get to get away with that, and they don't want peace, apparently. It's probably a little more complicated than that, but that's, that's the gist of it. Anywho, guys, give us a sec, we'll be right back, and, uh, kick some butt.